All right, people, welcome back to the wonderful world of drawing ray diagrams for Mr. Carter's class. Now we're going to deal with a converging lens. And a converging lens, the poster child of a converging lens, is a uh, double-sided convex lens. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. Remember, it can be anything that's wider in the middle than it is uh, in the vertical direction. Now, we're going to have several values to this. This one is the equivalent of our uh, concave mirror. Remember, our concave mirror had lots of variety to it, depending on where you put the image. Now, the nice thing about this is we can just draw a line. And we can say, this is my lens, because this is governed by the thin lens equation, and it's not going to get any thinner than a line. So we're only going to manipulate it there. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces out. I'm going to put my focal point. And one, two, three, four, five, six places out. That would be two times my focal point. I do not get centers of anything anymore, like we did with mirrors. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you sent the light through this way, it would go through that focal point. If you sent the light through this way, it would go through this focal point. And since we like to put our object on this side, the light is going this way, so that makes this the real, the correct focal point for this problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's two times the focal point. All right, let's start with an object that is, so the distance to my object will be bigger than zero but smaller than the focal length. And I'm going to put that one uh, over here. I'm going to make it uh, three boxes tall. I am then going to draw a few rays in. Okay, so this is my uh, object. My, the first ray I'm going to draw is the uh, parallel ray. And I'm going to use blue for the parallel ray. So it goes in parallel, then it goes through the actual focal point. Remember, converging lens means that the angles curve inward. All right. So this is my P ray. Then I'm going to have my uh, focal ray. Now the focal ray is the weird one for converging lenses. It goes through the anti-focal point the focal point that you're not, that isn't your focal point. Um, now, unfortunately, I just made a dramatic mistake and I went way up here. It would have to go up to that point. I could live with that, but I am drawing over my labeling. I'm just gonna go with it. Um, and so from that point, out this way um, is for my uh, F ray. I'm sorry, not, yeah, my F ray, the one that goes through the focal point, the one that's trying to fool us by going through the anti focal point. Now we can already see that this ray and that ray are diverging from some place over here. So I am going to trace them both backwards until we see where they overlap each other. Personally, half the time I'll go use the top of the ruler. The other half the time I'll use the bottom of the ruler. Uh, that looks about right. And so, remember, I am in the virtual world over here, so I'm drawing dotted lines. Okay. Uh, switch back to the color for the parallel ray. And we go back here. I have not crossed it yet. That's a real ray. It has to be the convergence of two rays which are uh, not really rays. So we know we're going to end up with a virtual image. It's going to go right through that hole. Everything is not lining up right, but we'll keep going with it. Our third ray is the mid-ray, just to see if it agrees with the other ones. And it does. Uh, the mid-ray is going through the midpoint, and in reality it comes out here in the 
imaginary world. It's out there someplace. Now, this is what you frequently get. Okay, uh, I have the convergence of three rays and they're not in agreement with each other. Uh, that one looks like it was drawn well. This one looks like it was drawn well. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll always got to double check that. I don't know. It looks to me like I missed my focal point by a little bit. So I'm going to say that this combination right here may be the most accurate. It doesn't really matter as long as I've got it somewhere in this general vicinity. And then my uh, image is somewhere like this. Okay. Now, let's actually calculate out where it should have been. Now, these diagrams are good for sketches of where it should be. They are not actual predictors of quantitative measurements. I mean, uh, right now, I'd say that my image is forming at twice my focal length or a little bit further away, and that it is, I, I do get some things. I do get the fact that it is uh, my, my image over here. My image is virtual. My image is virtual. It is upright. And it is enlarged. Okay, those things I can get from the sketch. Now, a calculation is more careful than that. Let's just do this in terms of boxes. Um, if I want to know the position of my image, 1 over the distance to my object plus 1 over the distance to my image is equal to 1 over my focal length. So I'm trying to find um, the distance to my image. So I'm going to subtract that over there. So 1 over the distance to my image is equal to 1 over my focal length minus 1 over the distance to the object. My focal length was 6. So 1 over 6 minus 1 over the distance to my object was 4. Um, these aren't too horribly bad. We can, they have a common denominator of 12, so we could even do it without a calculator and say that that is 2 twelfths, and we are subtracting off 3 twelfths. Okay, so we end up with 1 fourth. 1 over the distance to my image is equal to negative 1 fourth so therefore, the distance to my image, uh, wait a minute, something just went fooey there. Uh, 1 6 minus, so 2 twelfths minus 3 twelfths gave me negative, oh, 1 twelfth. There we go. I'm sorry. Um, gave me negative 1 12th, so the distance to my image is equal to 12, which is exactly twice my focal length, so it should actually have been here, and it was a negative 12. Um, so that means that it is in the uh, virtual side of the program. If I wanted my magnification, magnification is the simple way the height of my image compared to the height of my object. I always start with this because I know it's negative the distance to my image divided by the distance to my object. Um, and this always reminds me of what orientation to put them in. This is in the same orientation as this one. The uh, So negative a negative 12 over a, uh, now, here's the problem with the saying this side's positive, that side's negative. It's real versus unreal things. And the object is really supposed to be on this side of the lens. It's the side that creates the light. So that's a positive number always. So the distance to my object was a positive four. And so the magnification is equal to a positive 3. 
Magnification is a positive three. That means it should be three times as big as this one. So it should be nine boxes tall. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes tall. That is exactly what it was. And so our sketch was pretty good, not perfect. And we saw how we would handle the calculations. Um, I think that's it for the moment.